Well, hello and welcome to another exciting OpenShift Commons briefing. And this time it actually is kind of exciting in terms of um, what we're going to help you figure out. Um, this talk is all on Minishift, which is um, where you learn all about it in the session, um, in this briefing. But it's basically everything you need to know about running OpenShift locally. And um, hopefully you weren't afraid to ask for it. Maybe you were afraid to hope for it. But we've got two of the engineers, um, Hardy and Lala, who are going to be on and talking about uh, what Minishift it is, why we did it. And I'm going to let Hardy um, start us off and introduce himself and his team, and then we're going to get a demo of it. You can ask Q&A in the chat, and um, there's a number of us who can answer those questions. And then at the end, we're going to open it up for uh, conversation and Q&A as well. So um, without further ado, um, Hardy, take it away and introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone, to this comments briefing about Minishift. I kind of put up uh, my name. Who, who am I? My name is Hardy, and I'm uh, part of the developer tooling teams. And um, here's uh, some contact information. And I'm basically I'm one of the engineers at uh, min working at Minishift. And Lala also joins the channel. Uh, now I forgot to add him. So maybe, Lala, if you want to say hello. Hey, hello everyone. Um, I'm also in the Dev Tooling team and uh, I also work with Hardy in the Minishit project. Thanks. Cool. So if you want to reach out, um, you can reach us on uh, on GitHub or on email, or probably the best way um, to do this in general right now is to kind of reach us on IRC, on, min uh, on hash hashtag Minishit. Uh, we are hanging out there, or we started to hang out there basically all the time. We kind of do our development there, or our discussions about Minishift. Um, we also try to help any users. So if you if you try Minishift out of after this meeting here and and you run into any problems, you now easiest way is kind of just ping us on uh, IRC. Okay, um, so I have a couple of slides which are kind of just going to introduce Minishift uh, a little bit. Ignore the little text down there that I kind of <laughs> I must have missed uh, the text box. Um, I have a couple of slides to to introduce Minishift to you guys, and then I will give a demo. I think it's easiest to kind of just run through these introduction slides, and when I start the demo, it actually will take a, a little bit of time to start Minishift, uh, and maybe that's then the first time that we can already answer some questions. So um, what is Minishift? So technically, it's actually a fork. It's a fork from, from Minikube. Um, it has been quite a while since we forked. And the idea of Minishift is basically uh, run a single node OpenShift cluster on your local machine within a VM. And to do that, we are kind of basing on libmachine, which is um, basically what's underneath Docker's Docker machine to create and manage a, a virtual machine for you. And we are building on a relatively new feature of OpenShift itself, which is called cluster up, which allows you kind of, if you have a Docker daemon, to provision uh, this single node cluster on, on, on this Docker daemon. So that's basically what Mini, Minishift does. It kind of has two components, managing a virtual machine, and, and the second component is provisioning and managing OpenShift. Uh, so one to rule them all. Uh, anyone who kind of followed this space, uh, this like uh, OpenShift and trying to run it locally, uh, might have come across the various different approaches to kind of try to do that. Uh, for, for a long time, or there, there was this all-in-one VM, which was also announced or kind of published on the OpenShift website, which was Vagrant-based. Uh, and then there's ADB slash CDK, which um, Basically, we were working on before. Uh, again, vagrant based. There are various v attempts or kind of um, trips to do it to, the, to do the same thing with Ansible, and all of them uh, proved proved to be too too shaky. Uh, especially the vagrant, the vagrant approach had too many moving pieces. It's uh, you know you have your Vagrant file and Vagrant itself is Ruby and, 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 and Vagrant kind of changes a lot in behavior in ve various version upgrades. So especially the all-in-one team had also really problems to kind of maintain this thing. And in, in fact, um, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, weeks ago, they decided to 
to abandon the all-in-one VM in favor of Minishift. So, so Minishift is now the, the default or recommended way to, to start OpenShift locally on your, on your machine. And the same is true for CDK, the Container Development Kit from Red Hat. Um, it's based on ADB, which is also Vagrant, and it's also going to be based now in, in CDK3 on, on Minishift. So it's so it's kind of just things as a point. We want to make things easier. We we don't want to have to deal with the vagrant file and the vagrant box and sys and such. Minishift is one single binary compiled for your operating system. So if you're on OS 10, you're downloading the OS 10 um, binary, and you go Minishift start, and everything else comes from there. You you don't have to kind of unpack directories or all these kind of things. At least that's the idea. Oh, I'm already already at the demo. Awesome. Um, I'm just switch, switching quickly what uh, what I'm sharing. I want to share my terminal now. If you have any questions, in you now we let me just start start it off. There was um, one question that Lala seems to be answering um, for. I think it's Carl. Uh, around um, Minishift has been running great on Mac OS, but not so much on Windows 7. It works until they shut it down, and it seems to reinstall as it required. And they're looking for tips, um, tips for Windows okay. 7. So that's. So have you experienced? Let me, uh, let me just start this because it takes a little bit of time. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, can you guys all see my, my terminal now? I hope so. Yes, indeed. Right. So uh, Minishift is, is a single binary. Um, so one problem with, with the Vagrant approach was it's based on a Vagrant file. So you usually had to kind of CD into the directory where you had your Vagrant file and you kind of go Vagrant up from there. Minishift is a binary. You can put it wherever you want on your host. Uh, as long as you make sure it's in the past, you can just call Minishift. And uh, as I said, you, you go Minishift start. And in, in my case, I'm um, also selecting the hypervisor I want to use in uh, VirtualBox. Per default, I'm using OS 10 here. Per default, it would be Xhive. But I, I might also want to kind of show a little bit the management console, console later. So I'm, I'm using the, the VirtualBox hypervisor. Um, what's going to happen here is now there are basically two things. Um, if you start off all clean, this is nothing at all. It would download the, the ISO, like or the virtual machine ISO we are using. Um, and it would also download uh, the OC, o OpenShift OC client. And uh, now, fingers crossed, this works. Um, let's give it, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this question there. As there's, there's this one question if we are using um, VirtualBox on Windows 7, is this right? So that's yeah. true. We, we support multiple hypervisors. Um, so VirtualBox, uh, Xhive, and Hyper-V. And, and the default is, on OS 10, the default is Xhive. On Windows, it's Hyper-V for Windows 10, or for any Windows version where Hyper-V is installed. Um, uh, so now things are a little bit happening. Uh, and then on Linux, we, we kind of recommend KVM. And then also everything else is basically uh, VirtualBox. So that's kind of a little bit the default or the com lowest common denominator. Um, so, so what's going to happen here is, um, as I said, it's downloading the ISO and it's caching it. So if you kind of if you start from nothing, you will have a little bit of uh, initial waiting time. You have to download the ISO and some other bits and pieces. Uh, but once that's done, if you delete your virtual machine and you create a new one, you are caching the ISO and the OC binary, and things should go faster. So what's what's happening here is we also downloaded the OC binary and put it into a cache uh, on your host, and then we are calling basically OC cluster up on this with this OC binary against the Docker daemon running in the VM, and that's what you guys are seeing in here. You, even on you see the command which is kind of running. It's running cl uh, cluster up with various parameters which which are needed. Um, now, unfortunately, this will be a little bit slow, it seems, over the network. Um, 
any any question? I, I can either continue a little bit with the slides, or we kind of wait this out and we kind of we take some more questions. There was a a, a question um, about um, the release cycle. So, um, and I think is the mini shift. Are you, what release version for Origin are you using mini shift this time? And are you, every time we do a release of um, OpenShift, are you going to be doing a new mini shift, or how is that going to work? No. That's, that's, a, that's an awesome question. So basically, the minishift start command has an option called dash dash openshift version, and you can specify uh, which version you want to run. Per default, at the moment, we are aligning with 141, but you, you could go minishift start dash dash openshift version 1.5.1 alpha 2. I think that's the latest. And in fact, we're having some features. We just implemented proxy support. So if you're sitting behind the proxy in, in your company or whatever, and you have to kind of make Docker and OpenShift work through, through a proxy. We enable this feature. So it's basically MiniShift start uh, and then dash dash proxy host uh, uh, proxy URL. And for this to work, we, again, we are piggybacking. So MiniShift really tries to be the, 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 the wrapper around lib machine and kind of managing the virtual machine and kind of OC cluster up. And it provides a clue between the two. And we, what we want to do is like, we want to add more value. We want to find the things which make it easier for you to kind of then use OpenShift, to easily customize OpenShift, what it, what, what it comes with the default OC cluster. Um, and, and proxying is one of the things. And uh, as I said, like the latest 1.5 version of OC cluster up has also proxy support built in, and we are piggybacking on that. So if you want to use try to use proxies, you would go uh, MiniShift start dash dash OpenShift version 1.5.0 alpha 2 or what, whatever it is at the moment. <clears throat> um, does it su support OCP today? Not so. So MiniShift is the community version. That's the thing which is open source, and and you know you go to GitHub and look at the things, and that's that's based on OpenShift origin. So it will. And then there is then the, what what we're also working on is the CDK3, which is based on on OCP. So um, that will be uh, available via via developersredhat.com. It's also free. It's not doesn't cost anything, but. Um, it's basically a different uh, a different binary. I get. I guess you can also run it. I I'm getting a little bit. I, I'm sure. I was going to say that you might be able to run OCP with the community version. Um, not. I think you 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 need a registered um, VM. As in registered with the Red Hat subscription manager. Okay. Um, now I guess everyone sees that. Um, the whole provisioning work. Um, so we have an OC cluster up, and it kind of was installing the, um, the initial OpenShift configuration. It would install the OpenShift um, registry, the router, importing some default image streams. Uh, it also actually um, logs you in um, per default with as developer developer. That's another interesting one. The OC cluster app is basically unauthenticated. So there is a developer user, but actually it does not matter which password you're using. It's you know, whatever will work. And here's one of these um, extension points we are thinking of in the, in the upcoming release. We want to offer the uh, possibility for the user to, instead of having this default unauthenticated thing, having an easy way to create my own user authenticated and my own project kind of thing. Um, and nothing stops you. I mean, this is you know, like from here on, you can take OC or OADM and do it do it yourself. But our goal is basically to make these things for, for easier for the user without having to know all these OC and OADM commands. Okay, let's um, see what we have. I kind of I can do a mini shift. I I can go up here. Mini shift IP gives me the IP of of this VM. I can I can do a status, MiniShift status, kind of controlling if OpenShift and CBM is running. I can do um, so this you won't you won't see anything. Uh, there's a MiniShift console. Oh, sorry. Um, so and that actually opens um, the OpenShift console in in the web browser. 
but I guess you're just seeing my terminal right now. So you, you can believe me, I, I see the, the console now. You can also do something dash URL so that you see it's not, there is no magic here. So the, the mini ship knows the URL to the console. Um, what else? Yeah, you, you can you can set kind of parameters you 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 use quite often. So so depending on, on your environment, you maybe want to run the VM with four CPUs or with a certain amount of memory. So you can do thing, something like and, and there are there are uh, mini shifts start stage. Um, so here we're looking at the options which Miniship start takes, and there are quite a lot. But you see, you can specify a disk size, you can specify how many CPUs your virtual machine gets, and you can also spec specify how much memory. But it's of course tedious to kind of having to do that, or to remember that all the time. So what you can do is, if I do a Minishift config view, that should at the moment return nothing. I can mini shift config set CPU four ah CPUs sorry. So what what it's doing now is kind of persisting or um, these kind of configuration values in a configuration file. And uh, if I now view the config, it says CPU four. And what it means, I mean, it, it also also tells it's right now after I created already the VM, it's not going to do anything. However, if I would delete this VM and create it, reinstantiate or create a new one. It would use these values from the configuration file and would apply the defaults I'm needing or I, I want to use, like RAM. RAM and CPUs, these are quite common ones. Also, um, which kind of driver you want to use, if it's x hype versus Hyper-V versus VirtualBox. Um, Rydio. What next? Let's go back to the, any questions? Um, so the people were asking for the, where are the best places to look for documentation, and I'm suspecting you have that in a slide coming up, but it's OpenShift. So the, or right slide. now the documentation is all written in Markdown and part of the GitHub repository. We are not hosting this at the moment. So if it's if you go to the GitHub repository slash docs, it's there. Um, it's a, or if you started the README from the README, there are also links. Uh, we are in the process to actually um, properly generate HTML documentation and publish it in, um, actually it will be docsopenshift.org uh, slash minishift, something like this. Uh, it will happen within the next, we are working in sprints, like we try to do releases every three weeks. Uh, it will happen most likely within the next three weeks. So the, the people who are kind of looking into this, they, they are very close to kind of getting this in place. And then there would be, uh, the whole thing would be part of the OpenShift or docs. Uh, share screen. Mm -hmm. Going back to, um, can you guys see Safari again? I hope. Um, we are looking at the big word demo. Cool. Um, now I thought I kind of uh, go a little bit through the various commands and and kind of give a little bit an overview what what you can do. A lot we've um, we've basically already seen. Uh, don't ask me about this strange highlighting. That's kind of um, the tool, or like the Red Hat slides doing for me fast. So that looks a little bit off. Um, okay, so um, mini shift start. I guess that's a mo one of the most important ones. That's the thing which kind of creates a VM with, uh, with, with all the parameters, create, uh, instantiate the Docker daemon, or uh, starts the Docker daemon, and then calls OC cluster up to to start start uh, OpenShift. Uh, stop is is to uh, uh, stop is to stop the virtual machine, um, and it basically state is persistent. So if you do a start again, everything should be back back to where you yeah, where you've started. Um, so no no you're not losing any state if, if you go kind of start stop start stop. Um, it's it's a little bit out of sync between what I see and. I guess you guys see the, the lines not properly highlighted, but you get you, you figured out. Um, status we've seen it basically says running stopped uh, something like this. Um, delete that's the thing which actually deletes everything. Uh, it keeps a cached state, so if you have the ISO downloaded or OC version, um, that's kept. 
It's actually also in, um, um, nice to know if you start Minishift with, with different versions of OpenShift, like 1.4 and then a 1.5, you are getting two, two cached versions of OC and, and you can export this into the path. And then this means you can use the OC version, which matches the OpenShift version you're running. And again, uh, maybe in, in the next version or the one after, we will offer a command, something like Minishift OCNF, which dumps you a, a export command onto the, onto the console, which you then can execute. Uh, and that puts the right version of OC into the path. So that basically your OC binary is always aligned with whatever OpenShift version you're running. Um, IP, we've seen that just reports back the IP of, of the VM uh, console. It either displays the URL of the OpenShift console or it opens it for you. Uh, Docker M, that's an interesting one. Um, I should have done that. I can, maybe if we go back to the demos or to the shell later on, I can show that. That's the equivalent to um, Docker Machine Env. It basically prints to the console a command or uh, uh, which you can evaluate with all the Docker um, variables you need to connect or talk to the Docker daemon running in the VM. Uh, that's very has many use cases. If you're running Minishift, you actually don't have a need for Docker Machine anymore. You can use Minishift's Docker daemon for all your Docker needs. It's also if you're kind of building images locally, you can push it into this um, into the Docker daemon to be then consumed um, via OpenShift because OpenShift will use the same the same registry. So you kind of kind of um, you can reuse this VM. You know, you, you don't have to just use it for OpenShift. If you have any other Docker needs, um, you know, you can use it for that as well. Um, logs shows you the OpenShift logs. Um, service is uh, you, you say Minishift service um, project and and application name, and it kind of gives you the routes basically. That's at the moment broken. Um, being a fork of Minikube, it was it the code actually at the moment tries to use use Cube API and it kind of doesn't work. So this uh, is one of the issues we having to we are have, we are solving for the next iteration to kind of make this command work properly again. Um, OpenShift, that's a good one. I, I think now now I'm um, I'm going to switch back because these are kind of now these more, I think these more value things I've been talking about and the things I want to to show you. Um, so let's do this mini shift Docker M. So just that I that you see how this works. Works. So this is basically the same as mini, uh, if anyone uses Docker machine, the the same the same thing really. So the interesting thing is now <clears throat> you can, uh, in, so in some cases, you want to modify the default OpenShift configuration, or maybe views of, or, and, and I'm not talking about uh, the templates and stuff, but really the master master or node configuration of, of OpenShift. Um, and you can do this by uh, Minishift OpenShift, it's a little bit of a mouthful, Minishift OpenShift config view. And what came out here now is the, the um, master master config.yaml from the running OpenShift instance, and you can see you know whatever is set and 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 so on. And also, uh, now I take this command from somewhere here. So what I'm doing here is Minishift OpenShift config set, and you're specifying a, a JSON-based patch. So for example, in this example, I want to change the course allowed origins parameter. Per default, if you, if you run OpenShift, um, cross-origin requests only work from the IP of the VM and from localhost. So if you want to have any, any course request because you're kind of having a quite complex application and this application has to make um, cross-origin requests, it won't work. So what you can do in this case is you kind of you bring up open a mini shift and you're running this config set command and in in my com, uh, in my case here with course allowed origins dot star I'm allow uh, I'm basically saying any from I'm allowing uh, cross origin requests from any other domain 
uh, which is probably not maybe what you want to do, but for development, it's the easiest, easiest thing. And as you see, it, 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 uh, it applies the configuration and then it's restarting Minishift. And if you would now kind of do the config view again, and if you're scrolling somewhere up, um, what's that config? Yeah, here it is. Now, I, of course, no, you have, I didn't show you that it was uh, the default before, but fair enough. Um, and, and it also works, uh, if I click, uh, config view dash dash node. Uh, attack, sorry, dash dash target node. Right, so here you're seeing you're seeing the configuration of the of the node uh, node YAML. So basically, because it's all in one, it's running in a single node cluster. There is always basically only two configuration files: the master or the single node. Oh yeah. Um, was there something something more here? In the... There's one question in the chat um, that I think while well, you're pausing here. Um, Jonathan's asking, it seems like you're tying a specific version of OpenShift to a specific version of Docker, and he's curious if you will go back um, into the old version of Minishift and CDK to support updated versions of Docker. Uh, and Lala is, is answering that it's a dependency with the ISO for the Docker version. So, right. So the, 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 the version of Docker is whatever we, it's, it's basically in the ISO, in this virtual machine. Um, and and uh, I'm actually don't mean to shift uh, Docker and. So yeah, let, let me then answer that question by the time Hardy walks on the command line. So uh, the Docker version basically comes from the uh, ISO. So in CDK, we'll give the whatever latest Docker version comes in uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So when you build the ISO, we get all latest um, you know, uh, Red Hat Linux 7. So whatever that you think. So what I'm running here is, is a community version of Minishift, which per default works with, uh, that's an, I haven't co covered this. So initially, Minikube and Minishift were based on the boot to Docker ISO. And the community version per default is still doing that. That's what we're seeing here. But we split the code out a little bit, so you, we, we are also producing a CentOS ISO, so uh, an ISO based on CentOS, and a RHEL ISO, which will, which is basically used then for the for the CDK for the Container Developer Kit. And um, if we are going back to Minishift start dash, dash h, um, you see somewhere dash dash ISO ISO URL here. Um, so you, you can, at, um, Minish, at the time of Minishift start, you can point out the ISO you want to run. Um, in the boot to Docker if ISO, which, which is the default right now, we are not having the latest version of Docker. That might, we might be updating that within the next coming, uh, no, uh, next coming weeks. But um, we, at the moment, we have our focus on other things. So we want just wanted to have something stable. So we are a little bit behind when it comes to which kind of version you're running. Theoretically, nothing stops you to kind of build your own. It, it, it works actually quite nicely. You, you build your own ISO uh, and update your Docker version and point Minishift to, to it. Um, it should be, it's actually quite straightforward. And that, and that sounds, yeah, that was the question I was just gonna ask. Can you do it yourself? And that sounds yeah. like you need to add into the documentation how to. Um, so, okay, so let's back to this. Emma, I'm still here. We're back on your slides. Back to the slides. Um, uh, config we've already seen, that's kind of this way of kind of persisting certain runtime options of Minishift to kind of CPUs, RAM, all these kind of things. Um, SSH, I didn't show that. Minishift SSH, you can get into the VM and then you can do you know, your whatever commands you're, you want to kind of poke around to see how things work or what, whatever you want to do there. Uh, Minishift version specifies, the, uh, shows you the, the version of Minishift you're currently running. Um, get OpenShift version is a little bit useless as it stands right now. It basically just shows you the versions of 
OpenShift you can specify via dash dash OpenShift version. Um, yeah, we, it, it doesn't really help much. One thing we are considering is to uh, move this get OpenShift versions and also the service command under and as a subcommand under OpenShift. So the idea is everything related to the running OpenShift is under the OpenShift, uh, yeah, OpenShift context, so to say. And all other commands like config, um, start, stop, SSH, they affect the VM and they are in the root context. I kind of trying to be a little bit more consistent, trying to create a little bit more separation. Um, so that's also coming, uh, coming up within the next few releases. Um, so I thought we have a quick look at the roadmap. So I'm hoping the roadmap shows up. That would be good. Um, and and one of the reasons we're doing this presentation is um, there are a lot of you on the call. Um, we really would love you all to try doing this and give us your feedback. Um, get on the IRC channel and um, and and let us know. This is not the GA release of it yet, but it's being used pretty widespread. So I thought it was important that we get some more feedback back to Hardy and Lala and the rest of the team to make this work. The IRC channel was pound mini shift. On, uh, and we'll show that slide again in a few minutes. Yep. Um, so, so to give you a rough, at the moment we have better four. Um, I, I, and then the next release will be already a release candidate, hopefully. And after that, we are reaching mini shift one. After that, the plan is basically to go over to semantic versioning. We will drop this alpha beta stuff and basically follow semantic versioning. At least that's the idea. Um, mini shift 100 is also a little bit of a milestone. That's for us. We want to reach a state where we have feature parity with what we have in ADB slash CDK at the moment. Um, and for that, we um, we have to kind of look at the OpenShift registry, exposing it per default so that you can, as a user, access it. Um, actually, the ability to patch the OpenShift master, that's we've already done. I, we can cross that out. Uh, this one we are working on right now, the ability to cast, like the, the cluster comes up, but then I want to not use the default templates and the, the default image streams. I want to import my own. Maybe I want to run some OC commands to to create new roles or kind of uh, anything like this. So we, are, we will pro uh, provide a mechanism to do that. And the other thing, the big part we are working on right now is also having a consistent way to, to be able to get host folders, directories from your host mounted into the VM, because from then, from there on, then you could then use these directories and, and use, um, mount them into a pod, for example. Uh, which would be nice from a development perspective. I have my application running locally on my host in my editor. If I kind of can can get this host chain working, I can basically edit the code and it reflects directly in whatever running pod, uh, which is a little bit an alternative to OCR sync, which is kind of used, for example, with uh, Eclipse tooling at the moment. Um, so once we've reached Minishift 100, we, we be looking at these small little things which kind of make things life easier, like a, a mini shift login, which which kind of uh, helps you maybe also to create users and to, to uh, transparently lock you in. Um, we also want to offer persistent volumes. Um, we we also are looking at the moment we are using the XIPIO approach for application routing. We want to kind of revisit something we've done in ADB or investigated in ADB as well to to be able to specify a host name and do the routing um, on your machine, on your host, without having to go out to, to the, at the moment with the XIP or NIPIO approach, you always have to kind of, you need internet connectivity because you have to reach out for DNS resolution. With something like this, you would be able to do it on the, on the host. Uh, yes, I've mentioned this ability to manage user, uh, maybe make it easier to for the user to select the right version of OpenShift, something interactive, uh, uh, some interactive, uh, interactive um, thingy in the console. Then moving on, uh, like, like things like you know you can bring your own cluster uh, certificate to the cluster, and we we use it so kind of to avoid some problems uh, around um, uh, TLS uh, and. Um, 
another idea is if you have a running Docker daemon, maybe you don't need to run or create a VM. So maybe if we split if we split these two things up and, and having really, okay, we have things controlling the VM and things controlling OpenShift, we, it should be possible to say, okay, if we have a Docker daemon and the user points us to it, we, we just skip the whole VM uh, management part and we just provision OpenShift on top of that. Um, yeah, and then I guess uh, this one, so, uh, MiniShift 2, I call it, it, because I believe once we have that, a lot of commands and structures might change. Uh, one of the little bit of flaws maybe at the moment is that you can only create one MiniShift instance. You cannot have MiniShift 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and switch between them. And, and really that's a limitation in how the code is written. It just needs a little bit um, of re refactoring to make this work. But it's, uh, yeah, it's just an engineering effort we have to put into this. If you think Docker machine, um, it also allows you to manage multiple Docker machine instances. It's nothing which stops us doing the same for MiniShift. So one of the questions that, that just came up, um, and, and I'll just repeat it, um, Lala has kind of answered it as well. Um, who is the intended audience for MiniShift? And if, if you have a non-prod OCP cluster, would you suggest developers work there or locally in MiniShift? And from my point of view, um, this is this is all about getting developers laptops um, so that they can carry it around on their laptop and work there. But um, how would you address that from your point of view, Hardy? Right. So, so, so there are many many users. So I, our audience is just someone who wants to kind of try OpenShift. Um, and and now you can do OpenShift online, but but sometimes you want hands on. You want to understand the whole system. You want to be able to see the master configuration. And to do that, you know, you have to provision or run it somewhere. So that's, I think that that's one big use case. Someone just interested in, in OpenShift and, and he wants to use it. The other idea, or the, that's what developer tooling is, is, is kind of trying to do, is um, as OpenShift is gaining traction now and people starting to, do, to develop applications, um, it, it might not be that you always have access or that that you always share like some globally company-wide installed OpenShift instance to do your development. Or you, you want to kind of be just at home and just your home network and you want to do develop on your OpenShift application. So, so we want to provide an environment where you can actually do OpenShift development. You, you're, you're writing code for your multi-pod multi, multi uh, or multi-container-based multi OpenShift application. And I mean, that ties in in our offering this dev suite with the Eclipse tooling, which is kind of getting developed in parallel, which allows you to, it allows you to connect to any OpenShift instance, but in particular to, to your local, to MiniShift, to your uh, local instance, and kind of do, um, um, write your code in Eclipse and kind of get it deployed on OpenShift. It basically do everything, everything locally. Obviously there is a limit to this. Um, uh, it, it, it is very resource in, intensive. You need a powerful machine to do this. Um, and, and I don't think it scales for a microservice architecture with, with 15, 20 microservices. But for, for smaller use cases, if you have enough uh, you know, computing power, sure, I mean, that's by far the easiest, easiest thing uh, to use and stand up. Um, and it, you, know, you have full control over it. You can kind of, you know, you can patch the master config. You, 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 you can you know, touch and, and, and modify whatever you want. And then another audience group is um, people who, uh, a big audience group is people who want to demo things, like uh, people who go to conferences and stuff and want to show things. They also have the need to, to kind of do this locally or want to do this locally. So this, these three groups are, or these three main use cases we have, have in mind at the moment, I guess. Is there anything you want to add, Lala, to this, um, or any other questions uh, coming up? Yes, I think I, yeah, I would like to add. So uh, we actually have uh, recently had a discussion around it. Like, um, I mean, if you compare a OpenShift cluster to how you want to position MiniShift is obviously, you know, when you have a proper OpenShift setup, you would have uh, that it would be more restrictive because it's supposed to be that way for operations, right? But if you want the developer to basically quickly become productive, 
so you want to basically keep more uh, access to like you know roles and other stuff in openshift ssc rules so that he basically quickly become productive and kind of create his application um, and then obviously we want a documented path or an automated path where we can tell okay if you have uh, developed this application on many shift or cdk then you want to take it to a proper open shift here are the th- here are the things you want might might want to change to make it run you know in a proper setup so basically trying to make open shift easier for developers and uh, so that they can quickly start and gradually basically you know go towards a production setup kind of thing right and i mean i i i, I want to repeat like this is a development tool and an exploration tool this is nothing nothing even near to production it, it's it's a single node cluster and that's it so um it's definitely not some production thing but you can you, know, you can get as close as possible you get the same environment and then once you're ready you you you, you should it should be easy to transfer this into a production environment um, so now, now comes the, the part that we really want to get across. Now we showed you a little bit um, what Minishift is, what it does, and and hopefully we got you also interested. And now it's kind of now how can you help? But so try Minishift if you if you if you interested in OpenShift, if you kind of have the need to run OpenShift locally, now give Minishift a go. Go to the to the release page, grab the latest Minishift. Um, Mini shift release and just try it. And we're interested in any feedback. You know, like if it's if it runs great. If the documentation is not good, tell us. If you find a bug, tell us. Um, and that means um, preferably um, we, you, sorry, you report the bug on GitHub and in, in the issue tracker. Or you no, know, like if you're not sure, you know, join us on on IRC on uh, on the mini shift channel. Describe your problem, and then we can can kind of you not know, talk through if this is an issue or maybe a usage problem. Whatever you know, like we really try to kind of help you, and and it's it's really more fast than than for you. Really, we want to get, kind of make Minishift as good as it can get. And obviously, if you're interested and you're kind of selling into this idea, and you maybe find the bug, the absolute uh, the best step you could do or take would be to create a pull request, or you know, if you if you know find the problem and even create a pull request. Um, Minishift is on GitHub. Um, uh, mini, the organization is Minishift, the project is Minishift. If you go to the Minishift organization, you see also the other repositories we are, we are having. These are these ISOs, these virtual machines we, we talked about or we mentioned. Um, if you know this, this would be the place, you know, coming back to um, Docker version, this would be the place to go and uh, actually, I want to use the boot to Docker ISO, but I'm not happy with what we provide as a default in the Docker version. You would check out this project. Uh, um, there are readmes and stuff, but again, if you can't figure it out, we are happy to help. You would kind of update your 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 ISO build and build your own image and uh, yeah, your, your own ISO. Um, yeah, well, that's actually basically uh, you know can't you can't have a presentation with a uh, without a cute cat. So yeah. that's <laughs> great. So um, so, there's one I, more I, one more yeah. thing through here um, and please everybody do um, take a take a, a few moments of your time um, and try this out and give us your feedback um, Lala you want to try and explain what Danny is asking here um, with the project question uh, yeah. hi Danny uh, I think if you're asking about namespaces you can actually create a uh, and that's not a problem um, Hi. Um, no, the reason I'm asking is because I, I found out um, using the OpenShift Ansible uh, basically creates by default um, a lot of uh, uh, projects. What I mean by that is, you know, apart from the default, you have logging, you have cube system, you have uh, um, um, OpenShift, OpenShift Infra and such like. Um, and then, um, you know, I, I try to figure out or to find out why those projects are created by default and uh, what's the, the meaning of each of them. And then obviously the question uh, gets back to Minishift, whether it's creating those default projects um, out of the box or not. Yeah, so it's basically the namespacing, yes. There are certain workspaces which are kind of taken per, out of the box by OpenShift. That's just how it, how it works. Uh, um, but other than that, we are, as I said, we are, we are basing on cluster up and it creates, as a, as a user-facing thing, it creates my project. That's it. 
So that's uh, the default workspace. If you if you don't like it, you delete it. You create a new one. Um, it's also like Minishift. Once OpenShift is running, um, it 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 sets that's our job, kind of making things easy to configure OpenShift and to get it running. But once it's running, it's like okay, it's like it should be as any other OpenShift instance. Uh, it should be like OpenShift Online. It should be like OpenShift dedicated. It should be like OpenShift. Um, running somewhere on AWS, whatever, whatever your OpenShift you're dealing with. The, the behavior and stuff is the same. So whatever commands you, you want to run to configure it, like OC or ADM, that mm -hmm. should work pretty much the same way locally with your, with your mini shift instance as with whatever else you, you want to address. Okay, thank you. So also just wanted to add one more thing, like Heidi said, in mini shift, what we do, is we basically do OC cluster up. Um, you, I, I'm sure you guys have tried OC cluster up. Mm -hmm. uh, and also basically on top of uh, a virtual machine, which gives a Docker daemon, right? Um, an option we use boot to Docker. Uh, down. We have CentOS ISO also. If you like CentOS and we have for uh, a container development kit, we have Rail ISO. So, um, so the, the benefit of this is if you run Minishift, right, you don't need a Docker daemon. So be it Windows, OS X, or Linux, you can basically run Minishift and it will give you the Docker daemon from the VM and we use it to basically do a single stuff. And we're trying to do a bunch of trying to do a bunch of stuff to make it more you know uh, user friendly and that stuff which Hadi talked about. So most of the open thing default things we get it from by default from OSI Yeah, that's Ooh. it. All right. I see also there's a question about the slides. The URL which Diane just posted that stays. Um, the slides are already online um, and they are public or like they are accessible via this URL. And I'm not going uh, going to change that. So you can, but I think you know, there will also be a blog post and, and other bits and pieces. But if you're kind of interested right now in, in, in this information and you want to kind of click through these links which I had, um, uh, you can just access the slides via this URL. Yeah, that would be great. Cool. Uh, just to just to re reply to Carl's question about Windows 7. Uh, so sometimes what happens is uh, the also we depend on obviously you know depend on the virtualization software. So if the virtualization software the VM is stuck in a situation where Minishift cannot interact with it, so that becomes a problem. So what we what you can do is you can open a virtual box and see if the VM is running or stop. If it is running, uh, you can actually forcefully make it stop. And then go back to command line and say Minishift delete. Then you should be able to delete the VM and again you should be able to start and then from Minishift start. If nothing is working for you, the whole setup is gone like for a toss. Then what you can do actually, there will be in the home directory of the user, there will be dot Minishift directory. And inside the directory, there will be a machine directory where basically we keep the information or basically files and other stuff about the VM. So you can manually delete that machine directory. And then again, start from any shift start, uh, which should be able to fix your issue. Hmm. All right, then. Um, there's another question just popped in. How does it handle networking from the host? If I bring up two projects with routes and services on port 443, how does it resolve those on the host? Um, that an that's IRC? basically, um, that's something you will have to. Um, Resolve. I mean, the, the route, the route has also as application. Uh, with the route, you always go into the H HP proxy. Uh, Maybe something we talk about on the IRC channel, giving another. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think if it is basically if it maps to the same uh, port in the VM, it should not work. I mean, we have to map to a different no. port. Uh, that's no. my understanding. No. But I don't think even that you can do that from a, from an OpenShift perspective. That you kind of exposing two different services. If the pods running on this on this like on 443, if you want to expose them as routes, you still have to kind of decide at some stage. Okay, one is 443 and one is uh, 444. You can't. I, it's a conflict. You, you cannot expose the same port out uh, and, and expect that that uh, you can can reach it. I hope. We all hope. Yeah, I think we can discuss this in IRC. This is a good topic for IRC. Right. <laughs> um, 
All right. Well, we, I, we are also trying to have a pub, public mailing list. We will actually pub, uh, you know, announce it when we have it. If, once we get the, the mailing list set up, I'll add it to the blog post with all of this so people can sign up for that too. But really, everybody, we'd love your feedback on this. Um, take a look at the, the little bits of documentation that we have. If you want to make a pull request and, and work on the documentation, we'd love that too. Um, so, hey, um, and Hardy and Lala and the rest of the team, and even the people who did the all-in-one VM, which I love so much and work so hard on, um, we really appreciate everything that you do to make it better for developers locally. So thanks again, and um, we'll look forward to the follow-up after we have a re release candidate and um, do this again. So awesome. thank you. All right. Thank Take you.